Please, round of applause for the huge brains that are about to come out on stage, Jim and Louise Gunderson. <laughs> Maddie, thank you. So and if you cry about this one, I'm going to laugh at you. Okay. <laughs> okay, the first question is, why are we talking about this? And the answer is that we've been building robots and artificial intelligence for the last 15 years. We've been building the things that are going to take your job. This is, and by the way, we're the kind of people who bring robots to parties. Which is probably why we don't get to, invited to a lot of parties. Um, this is one of the robots we built a couple of years back at, uh, I think that's Dana Kane's birthday party. Um, this is a robot we built recently that actually does take jobs. Uh, but what we focus on are jobs that are dull, dirty, and dangerous, the kind of jobs that people shouldn't be doing. And that's what we think robots should be doing. This is a security guard robot to patrol warehouses. This is a robot, we didn't build this one, that is a, it's a cucumber picker, which on the surface is pretty silly, right? But when you think about migrant labor, you think about toxic ground, you think, think about dehydration and hot temperatures and all of that, that's a job that machines should do. Bartending? If you're a bartender out there, get nervous. These are bartending robots in Vegas. And there's a couple of restaurants in Japan that are totally staffed by robots. And it's not just the service industry, the physical side. Robots are moving into customer service. People in customer service are I.O. devices. That is all they do is translate into language and translate back to the machine. And as if you got an Alexa or a Siri, you know that's up. And the guy on Venice Beach who does the caricatures, maybe a while before there's a robot sitting there because they're not good in sand and salt, but it's on the list. He can keep his day job. Yeah. Um, we're actually working on a system that does uh, content generation. So all those people in the social media field, you're on the chopping block. Now this sounds bad, right? All these jobs are going away. But we've done this before. Okay, so I'm going to take you back in history to the first Industrial Revolution. Every piece of underwear, that's underwear, was linen, it was spun by hand, it was woven by hand, it was made by hand. It was hideously expensive, and if you were poor, you had wool or nothing. But the first machines come in, and a lot of people who worked in that industry were out of work, and they were mad. They, this is Luddites smashing the machines. However, soon after that, people discovered the joy of cotton underwear. It was cheap. You could change it every day. And the joy of clean underwear. <laughs> and so a whole industry became making underwear. And people changed it every day, which meant that these people were all going out of work too, because there was too much underwear to be washing it by the river. There just wasn't enough river. So these people are out of work until this is the first electric washing machine. And notice that this is not commercial. She's sitting in her house. And her her, she is not out beating clothes on the street. And then there's a whole other industry that comes in because those things break. And who knew that washing repair was an industry? Who knew that cell phone repair was going to be an industry? What this means is you get these cycles up and down, jobs appearing, jobs being obsoleted, new jobs coming in. And the question becomes, how fast does the change occur? If it changes too fast, we get a very dystopic universe. If we can manage the change, it's a utopia. These are the tools that they use to build the pyramids with. I mean, humans have not been here for a long time, but in less than 6,000 years, we went from this to the type of machinery we use now and take for granted, 3D printing. That's an adaptation rate that is phenomenal. And we're going to have to get better. Because as the machines move in, we're going to have to change. What's the workplace of tomorrow going to look like? Nobody knows what it's going to look like. But I can tell you this, it's going to be AIs, it's going to be robots, and it's going to be people working side by side divvying up the tasks. So we have to be ready to stop doing the old stuff and start doing the new stuff. So your job is to help people learn and to help your community adapt. Because if you do it, 
if we do it, we can ignite a utopia. I'll be the downside. Utopias are great, but they take a lot of work. So get to work now. Well, all right, not now. Wait for about 45 minutes until the shows are over, but then get to work. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You're faking. Yes, I'm faking.